finals footy is, I'll tell you what, pretty back. G'day, I'm James Clemens, not to be confused with Barry Stoneham. Uh, this is the I AFL like Today Show. The stats word, do you know who Barry Stoneham is? Uh, I was going to pretend that I do, but... Barry no. Stoneham definitely played before Stats Boy was I've, live. I've had it, heard of his name 100%, but yeah, I'll have to uh, research him. All right, this is the AFL Today Show. We are <coughs> all about footy finals, and we are brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. Joining me for this, oh my God, the prelims are set after two bloody classics on the weekend. What a weekend of footy it was. Ah... Full-blown footy nuffs, local weirdos. Some, who might not be in their right mind, would call them AFL experts. Over there, it's Alex Donnelly. Pretty good watching amazing games of football and having nothing right on it. It is such an amazing experience, not stressing. I've been doing that for the whole month. You've been doing that for 10 years. It's been great, yeah. The guy who <laughs> is very sad in the middle, it's the stats guy. Oh, I don't, I'm not very sad. I'm, they're some of the best finals you'll ever see. I've no, just no, looked no. up. North Melbourne set. Yeah, oh, I've yeah. just, I don't even want to talk about North Melbourne. We don't have to talk about them. Uh, I looked up you Barry Stoneham North as well. You put North Melbourne stuff in the run sheet, stats uh, man. Oh, we can talk about that. Barry Stoneham surprised me. On 1,000 goals in 241 games. So yeah. that is unbelievable. Barry Stoneham rolled, what, a, what a legend. Uh, bustling half forward. Yeah. For those the, 80s, for the cats. 90s cats. Yeah, yeah. I'd heard of him. Just Flaming didn't shock of red hair. There we go. I'll tell you what. Uh, anyway, what a cracking weekend of finals it was. We're going to awesome. break them both down and set you up for prelims, of course. But if, before we do that, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get all around the social channels as well for the AFL Today Show. They're everywhere. YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X. What is it on Facey? It's Aussie Rules Today. Aussie Rules yep. Today, yeah. Nice. Uh, we'll have some live stuff popping off over the next week or two as well as we head towards a grand final. The thing is, 40's back. And look, seriously, what a weekend it was oh. for just footy being back. Yep. Like, footy could not be more back than it was on the weekend. I didn't think it could get even more back from last week. And then you go this way, you're like, yep. Eh, it was one good last, game. Like. Yeah, last weekend, one out of four was good. Uh, uh, yeah, true. But. True. But it's gone to another level. Absolute classics. Yep. Yeah. Footy is so back. <laughs> footy has never not been more back. <laughs> Proof to me. I, like, I, I was waiting for you to sing a song of this. Yeah. Well, I'm bringing Fury no, back. No, no, no. Don't <laughs> get me off track. I'll start singing the Wiggle song. Oh, yeah. no. no don't do we that. are the pride of Brisbane to fruit salad. <laughs> yummy, yummy. That yummy. was weird. That don't was do weird. that. I also just, <clears throat> Wiggle's tangent. Let's do it. <laughs> Wiggle's saying, it's in the quick look. You know who's weird? Anthony Wiggle. That dude is just, because all the other ones, all the other <laughs> original ones are gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's, he's still doing it. But you got to admit, you have to be. Uh, a bit weird to be in the Wiggles. Are you surely? I think so. Yeah. I find it even weirder <laughs> that the other ones have all aged out and, and he's, he's still, still just like, nah, no, nah, no, nah, this is this is mine. I feel, it's an addiction. It's just weird. He's mm. just addicted to And he got involved in the footy, so that was, that was very weird. Anyway. See the blue one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Legend. Also, the purple one just weirds me out. Just, oh, I don't want him. I don't want to see that dude ever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Jeff. Let's no, 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 no. He's saying the new one. Jeff's oh, the there's a new one. Jeff's yeah. the goat. See, this is how, the so you're like, that's my era. Yeah. <laughs> We've already spent way too much time doing the wiggles. <laughs> Let's do some news. <laughs> hey, Dusty's going to the Gold Coast. I called it. So did one other one. You and Sam McClure. Yeah. Well done. Oh, I don't want to be in that same sentence as him, but anyway. Well, at least. The reports are out there that he's thinking about. He's thinking about it, yeah. So not to pull the trigger too early. No. <laughs> but it came out over the weekend. Yeah, there's been chats, which is kind of funny. Uh, I'm still not entirely convinced that Gold Coast need an injury-prone 300-game veteran who at his best this year wasn't very good. I'm mm-hmm. not convinced they need another half forward that can only get 10 touches a game and not run out I of got a game. little. Well, thing they've already got rid of Lukosius. No, well, they've still got him. They've said, you can look, but we don't know yet. Would yeah. you put him as the sub? Like Bruce, that, no, that Bruce could, I actually don't no, mind that. Post that would up. be fun, post and up. he could kick a goal or two exactly like Bruce has done in the finals, and that, and he could just be like, oh, I get to chill on the bench all game. Just yeah, but the problem is he, he could come on, and it's like we're getting smashed. Just no, nah. I don't know. I think that I, as a sub, I think that could work, and he he could in his contract be like, bit less money, you just get to be the sub. Awesome, I actually Gold Coast. love that idea. There we go. Nah. I'm here for it because if you need that extra boost, like you yeah. get smashed, and he's not as fast the second anymore. quarter. It's like Dusty, just get out there yeah. and just kick three snags. He's like, yeah. all right. I'm just going to go on a jet ski after this yeah. and get home. What do you want to also, he's not going to be able to do a four-quarter effort as we already saw this year. You bring your money in the second half, he's a bit, like, doesn't look as slow. I don't know. I'm, I'm so is Dusty getting a jet ski as part of his sign-on package? Because you're giving everyone up there a jet ski. Well, if I'm in charge of Gold Coast, yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think he gets two, yeah. And I'm pretty sure I am actually now in charge of Gold Coast. <laughs> uh, I'm going to check my contract. Uh, but I think there's sort of machinations behind this as well. That's the big sort of story, right? So he retired a Tiger. And, like, Tigers fans are salty. 
They will be, yeah. Oh, but you, it's like, you Tigers, us, what are you doing? (laughs) That's actually how every Tigers fan sounds. (laughs) And (laughs) And Blues fans. I love Tigers fans. To be honest, like, actually... The vast majority of Tigers fans, like this, they were so beaten down for so long. Yeah, I love them. And now they're just like, we had a success. It's cool. Yeah, they they had three. A lot of them are pretty cool. Just going, yeah, five years. That's fine. Exactly. But that's kind of like the entire vibe around the Dusty thing. They feel betrayed. Do Uh, pretends to be shocked that do they have a case? No. Nah. Uh, he won them three flags, three Norm yeah. Smiths. He won a Brownlow. He yeah. played 300 games. He stayed for the one crap year. Mm. And then if you go off into the sunset, it's fine. Luke Hodge did it. Sam Mitchell did it. Jordan Lewis did it. It's fine. Yeah, Hawks fans weren't yeah, mad Grant about that. Grant I am not hey, going to begrudge yeah. anyone going, you want to pay me how much? To do what? <laughs> sure. <laughs> to be the sub maybe? Yeah. That's awesome. Like, just go get paid. Like, Dusty's already made a bunch of money. That's fine. I don't His think legacy with, yeah. will not be tarnished by him going to the Gold Coast for an extra year. No. Or two. He'll also enjoy being up on the Gold Coast and no one knowing who he is because exactly there's right. a lot of dudes with a skull and tattoos up there. It's just like, sup. <laughs> you could go to the Gold Coast right now and go, you Dusty? Yeah. And like yeah. some dude named Trent is like, no. No, but his name might be Dusty also. Yeah, exactly. yeah. The yeah. chances yeah. are. Yeah. The other thing is if he takes them to the finals, I know that's a very big if, that would be a very cool storyline to talk about next Why year. Why was it a big if? Because they're not that good. Mm. And they've, they've, where they finished? Of course, they're better than North, but they're not in the top. They like, won 11 games, teams. wasn't it? The yeah. record. Anyway, yeah. anyway uh, that's another Dustin story. Dustin the Gold Coast is fun. Yes, let's, let's make it up. I just don't care. Uh, the Blues delisted <laughs> five players, and when I say delisted five players, basically cleared out their injury locker room. They did. Went, what are you? Oh, medical room. Medical. Yeah, get, <laughs> are you on get crutches? Are you on crutches? Jack yeah. Martin, David Cunningham, who I love. I love David Cunningham. Uh, Caleb Marchbank. Um, it blew sure. my mind. He played 60 games in 10 years. Crazy. That's wild. Alex Murkov and Dom McCoy. Uh Never heard of the last two. That's all right. They barely played. So okay. Jack Martin. Jack Martin was the biggest asked, one. He asked to be delisted. He That's did. the first player ever to, I think, ask to be delisted. That is, so that is very weird. It was because they were basically like, we need to free up mm. a bunch of, A, roster spots, salary cap, try to figure this yeah, out. Because he's on way it. too much money. Yeah. And uh, I think the Jack Martin experience as a Carlton fan was wildly underwhelming. Uh, the highs were high and then well, he can win a game off his own boot. Well, was no, of, then he doesn't get on the field. Middle enough. of last year. You're missing Jack Martin. Yeah. Jack Martin comes in, you make a charge to the prelim final. Then he's gone. This year he plays three games. It's exactly the problem. So if you can't trust somebody in their health, it's really, really hard to sort of put your uh, hopes and dreams on that player. Yeah. Because when he did come in next, like he's the perfect fix next to Charlie and Harry, like a you know, mid sized mm. forward, mm. bit of speed, but the dude just can't stay on the park. And at some point you yeah. just go, What's the point here? What are we doing? He hasn't played more than half the games in a season since 2020. So that's, tough. that's brutal. A lot of teams would love him to have, like, just stay healthy, yeah. but you just can't. You know how him. we talk about missing piece for Freo? Jack Martin. Sure. But it, that's if he can stay on the park, yeah. Yeah, but is, you, it three, you, is, it, is the missing piece three games of Jack Martin? Yeah, I know. So if you can get 15 games out of Jack Martin, sweet. But yep. even 15 is so frustrating because I think for a team like Carlton who thrived on continuity. A bit of momentum season, and things. And yeah. like just getting that momentum behind yeah, him in the second half of last year. Like, he was a big part of that. And I think it all sort of came a cropper this year when he was in, out, in, out, and just done. So, anyway, uh, other bits and bobs from teams who are not involved in anything we're about to talk about. How do you won the North Best and Ferris, that's boy. Yeah, I think uh, there's another thing Cherry's got robbed in, but that's okay. I, I, I've How had... has he been robbed when it's voted on by no, people at your club? But I'm very, very, very surprised that Sheasel or Cherry didn't win because Aldiu was not in our top two best players by a long shot, in my opinion. So According to the club, he was. That's okay. stage a coup there, stats boy. I don't really care that much, but that's just, that's just my opinion. Full Jan 6 over here. Yeah. Cherry. All right. uh, Todd Marshall, though, this is actually, you know, impactful stuff that we're talking about in the concussion protocols again. Mm. That is not great. This is like his third or fourth this year. Yeah. Mm. This is this is almost where you, the AFL has to step in and go, all right, we need to do a lot more testing here and see what's going on. You can't keep getting concussed this many times. Yeah. That's And, like, easily. Like, well, it wasn't yeah. easily. You did not, get not, a knee not in the back one, of but, the head. Mm. It was like a knee in the back of the neck. Yeah. Mm. Which was weird. But, but you know what your head's year. attached to? Your neck. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, there you go. It's all connected. It's connected it's to, the bones, to the hip <laughs> But the problem was. He's not a medical doctor, but I know what I'm talking about. I reckon you're pretty close. They've passed him. I've sung the song. They passed him that night, but then he's entered the concussion protocols yesterday. So, what did he pass on Friday night? Yeah, that's but why they then, said it in the commentary. Didn't but I, I, I do know that you know you have some times where it's like you're fine, and then the next morning it's like, oh. Well, we had it at our footy club. They have those like machines that properly test it, whereas they wouldn't have that on the obviously the side of the yeah. ground. But maybe they should. Yeah. Maybe they should. All right. That's the other sort of stuff. The boring stuff. There are also two awesome games. Yes. Of yes! Unbelievable. Three. Both underdogs win. And we had two insane, insane finishes for both of these. Well, yep. we have a three-point win to Port Adelaide 
We have an absolute cracking six straight goals out of nowhere for the Brisbane Lions to overtake the GWS Giants again. And the storylines coming out of Friday night was Ken Hinckley <laughs> versus Ginevan versus James Sicily oh, versus that. now everybody, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm on Team Ken. I'm Team Ken. Uh, so am I. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. And then on top of that, GWS last night out in straight sets. <laughs> Choking Big away <laughs> two straight weeks. They choked a fourth quarter away in just abhorrent fashion. If you are one of the eight GWS fans out there, oh. you would be so angry. You're also, like, what the hell just happened? Like, wait. Jesse Hogan is like, I just did everything. Yeah, five And minutes. we completely cooked this. If you said before to GWS, oh, we'll give you six really good – if you play six really good quarters – Oh, you think out of the eight, you'd be like, oh, we should win at least one of those games. That's the reverse they Carlton lost, who played two of eight. They only lost like two quarters the whole final series and they're out. That is wild. Well, Hence why quarters one is like the most meaningless yeah, stat mean ever. Anything, yeah, The most important one for me, I think, it was across those two games, they led for all but 15 minutes <laughs> oh, yeah. two games. of those two entire games. It was, it's 91%. Minutes. It's yeah, unbelievable. That's wild. It's hilarious. Uh, and as mentioned, so GWS <laughs> lose to Brisbane last night and then the Wiggles get involved. And <laughs> oh, just, yeah. It was, what a uh, kick in the guts for GWS. The cruel, the cruel like, come wiggles. on, man. Now the wiggles are piling on? What the hell is this? And you got the weird, stupid red one. He, ru he runs and goes bull, but he's wearing a basketball ref jersey. That was a bit weird. Wiggles, you've got an entire closet full of costumes. You can't get an umpire's jersey. He had a foot lock of uh, shit. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah. He might actually still work at yeah. Foot Locker. Oh, he well. might. Maybe. Also, Collingwood fans <laughs> dancing around having the greatest time that Hawthorne and GWS have been knocked out of finals. It's... You didn't make finals. Shut up. Hey, they won a granny. I'm still standing by the Pies. They won a granny Shut last up, year. Pies <laughs> fans being mouthy. Who would have thought <laughs> yeah. that? Right. So with that in mind, what, who are we left with? Obviously, we yes. have Sydney. In terms of the favoritism at the moment, yeah. Sydney, Geelong, Brisbane, Port. Uh, we right. have Sydney versus Port on Friday night at the SCG. Uh, we will do a fair amount of breakdowns of this game, yes. no doubt, in the coming days. But when was the last time you beat Port? 2016. Oh. What's happened in all those games? It's been like, there's been three at the SCG. Last three, of the, yep. Uh, a whole bunch of them be the Adelaide Oval, though. So. And one at the Gabba somewhere. <laughs> and one was over 100 points recently. Which, yeah. But it's a very weird scenario that still Sydney are going to be favourites in this one after that. They're not, not just favourites. They are favorites. dominant. Do we want the Premiership right. odds as well? We'll, get to the, yeah. we'll do the Premiership odds at the end of the okay, show. Yeah, We've right. already got them there. Sounds good. And then obviously Geelong versus Brisbane at... 5.15 on Saturday. Love that. That's a great time. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Pretty good. That. That's a real twilight. good pub watching. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Works I'll be perfect. there. I'll be there, but it's good. Yeah. So I'm in time. Sydney on Saturday. Horse, you, horse running around week. I can make it to the pub to watch the footy. If it was like a four o'clock start, yeah, but 5.15. 5.15 is so good because it's like you roll in before 5.15. <laughs> yeah. You can be there from like 3.30. 4.30. Get deep. a Palmer at half time. Boom. You like you can go. have food beforehand if or you want. This is nah. great. Or at half time, or, like, you order your dinner you, at quarter time. Use your QR quarter code. Quarter time, half time. <laughs> sort it out. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. This is awesome. And then it's done, by, unless it's extra time, you're done by what? Eight o'clock? Yep. It's great. Home by nine. What a setup. Oh, you know, you got to go out in the town. Some of us got to fly home the next morning <laughs> to be in here. <laughs> yeah, true. Me. Where do you go out on the town stats for? Ah, uh, you don't want to know. He, he's hanging <laughs> out with Tyson Stengel a bunch. <laughs> yeah, we just, we always, I mean, Tyson. Passed out somewhere <laughs> in Lammy's. All right. <laughs> I miss Lammy. But there you go. That's the finals bracket remaining. So we have Sydney Port and Geelong Brisbane. Huge. Amazingly, all of these teams have met before in finals. Yeah. Uh, I believe the Geelong Brisbane won Sydney Port. Like, I think the all the combinations of the grand finals have already happened as well. In a grand final. Yeah. yeah. That's Sydney, why I, was I think hoping, Sydney, and, Sydney and I think it was Fitzroy were like 1899. 1899. So That's why I was hoping a, for GWS. It's just a new team. We've got Sid these these same teams. But Sydney at least Port haven't been Port up Port last played in a final in 2003. One and only time. Mm. Awesome. Was Boke playing then still? Probably. No, no, I'm joking. All right. Before we get into the wraps, should we do a bit of a vent sesh? Ah, oh, the gym vent sesh pretty much we call it on here. Vent sesh. I am Team Ken. <laughs> Ken off. He is enough for me. I'm on. I'm on Team Ken for this too. I think he was a little bit of an idiot, but I am on his side. I just want to check. Yep. Lee Matthews. Mm -hmm. Dermot Brereton. Yep. <laughs> Jordan Lewis. My good mate Hodgie. Sam Mitchell. Yep. <laughs> what are they? I feel like they've all got something in common. Uh, something mm. to do with Glen Ferry. Mm. Oh, that's right. They all played for Hawthorne and they all had a bloody sock. Bias. Grow up. Jeez. <laughs> My team lost and the old man was mean. <laughs> what? 
At the same time, I understand. Yeah, it's like some weird old dude who looks like the bad he's guy creepy, from bloody yeah. June 2. He's having a crack at <laughs> That is a good call. Or uh, like, Emperor, Emperor Palpatine. He exactly. looks a bit like yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> but Ginevan, you know, has a crack on social media and can just like, not flying to Sydney this week, boy. And then Sicily sticks his big, dumb, ugly face. He'll go, don't you talk to my good friend Jack Ginevan like that. And Ken's like, you shut up as well, you sook. I loved it. I was just absolutely frothing just about this post game stuff. And the fact that everybody just got so up in there too. Yeah. Oh, think about the game. Think about the children. What would the children think? The children think would be, yeah, don't mouth off and not back it up, idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Simple as that. That's a really good lesson to teach the kids. Just don't mouth off. If you're going to talk S, you're going <laughs> to get hit. It's it's the old graph. It's F around. Yeah, find yeah. Out. Find yeah. Out. Guess what? You're going to talk a bunch of crap on the internet. You're going to get the old one, two, cost of zoo. Exactly. Bang! It's like it's just words. <laughs> Ken could have gone, come here, giddy. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> going to have some time in the London Tavern this week. Do you reckon? Hey! I loved it. I love that Ken just like, have a sook. We beat you. <laughs> and Sicily's like, don't you talk to my friend like that. And Guinea's like, what did I do? You know what you did. <laughs> they everyone fired bloody Ken during the like week. And he turns around. He's like, yeah, I'm full of gumption. I'm full of like, never dare us apart. <laughs> Let's off into him. I loved every bloody second of that. And any media member who's having a sook about it, shut up. Get off your agreed, high horse. Agreed. This is awesome because I absolutely love the simple fact I would do the exact same thing. Is it, can we just also note, Hawthorne have been talking rubbish all, all year, year on the this internet. This is the team taking <laughs> selfies on the bloody field. Exactly. Yeah. Like, we beat you. <laughs> <laughs> Get him in the background. Ah, sucked in, idiots. <laughs> Ken's just like, ah, look at this. We beat you, Guinea. You're going to go hang out with your buddy Brody Grundy now? It's going to be in the players <laughs> section, isn't it? Yes. Unbelievable gear. The other one, Sam Mitchell saying, oh, like that he's a young, young kid. He's 21. He's he's an adult that's commented on a thing. Like, just calm down. He's Haw- not like a little kid. Hawthorne fans saying the something, something vortex in the brain hasn't fully yeah. grown by the time you're 21. Shut up. I lost he's it. He's an that. adult that can handle himself when he's put himself out there on social media. So Sam Mitchell, stop sucking. For the record, this stuff should be encouraged. 100%. The more that we see personalities of players yeah. and personalities of coaches, Coaches coming out means, oh, wait, want to grow the game? There's rivalries. Fun, yeah. People will look forward to the next time these two teams will gather around each other. these two. Exactly. No, no, not gather around. Or opening round. Opening round That'll next cool. year, Adelaide Oval, Port Adelaide, Hawthorne. That'd be sick. Do it. My entire thing with this is people lionize Kevin Sheedy. Mm. It's like, oh, he was a great entertainer. He knew how to sell. He the went game. a little bit further than Kevin. You the know, day. we're waving bloody scarves and jackets and everything. And now those same, same media members, like, Dermot Brereton, line in the sand, I need to see way more biff. This is the same bloke who's like knocking dudes out. Exactly. Passion him in the Luke, testes. Luke like, Hodge tried doing? to decapitate someone with a goalpost mm. one day. And like Kevin Sheedy was such like a, like, the way that he's lionized now, like this simple like innovator of like entertainment and stuff. Yeah, this is what that's all about. This is all about getting this personality involved into footy pushing it to the fore and reveling in it because sport is entertainment. This, this also just play. goes back to boomers not understanding that social <laughs> media is the way forward. Yeah, 100%. I'll talk about that later. Sucked in, idiots. That was fun. <laughs> let's now talk about the game. Yes. Game wraps. Port Adelaide 75, Hawthorne 72, continuing the hallowed tradition of three-point finals margins between these two Three teams. in a row. That's unbelievable. Also continuing the tradition of if you get belted by 50 in a qualifying final, you are a certainty the next one. So, week. yeah, 50-plus points in a qualifying final. If you lose by that, you, 12 straight times, you go on to win. That is that is wild. Since uh, 2000, I believe. It is Crazy. awesome. It's a great stat. Mm. The game itself was pretty fun. Was. We were messaging back and forth going, this game... Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, it was, was like, even like during the, the first quarter, it was kind of like, yeah. this umpiring was chaos. What is going on here? Zach Butters was throwing himself around like oh a kamikaze jet. It, he it was, was honestly awesome. trying to hurt himself. It was great. <laughs> and then it just kept getting, like, it just, they kept upping the ante. That's the best the way to The wizard got in that. on the action. Yep. Yeah, Ginnivan with a couple, he kicked a couple kicked of two in the end. But as I read it, it, set the tone. He, he had sore ribs. He had that padding on his ribs. The first few contests, he ran from the other side of the field. Just there was that was one late, tackle on the, 50 meter, people. on the 50 oh. meter line. He came from yeah. nowhere to yeah. drill. Someone's like, oh, that was awesome. That's one of the best things in footy when you're watching on TV where you can't see the player that's laying about to lay the tackle and yeah. you just see him coming in from the side and just go bang. And it's just awesome. Port Adelaide should have been a mile in front though. 
in yeah, the you, maybe first quarter and a half. Yes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The way the Hawks came at them late was awesome. The fourth quarter was an absolute, like the phrase rollicking affair was basically built for this game because mm. uh, the Hawks didn't kick a goal in the first quarter. Yeah. They kicked two points. They were absolutely getting massacred and Port never really took proper advantage no. of in that first quarter. Zach Butters got fined again. Sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> Zach Draymond Green Butters. Oh, my God. And it was like the way that Hawthorne couldn't really get their big forwards involved, like Chol no. and Deer. Like Chol Deer I'll tell you why Chol played his, terribly. He tried his hardest. It's because he, he, yeah. he put the tape over his bloody uh, eyebrow and had that little streak in his hair. You mean, what if he needed to put tape there? Yeah, this guy, this boomer over here. <laughs> yeah. no. I don't like how he looks! All right. To be fair, <laughs> okay, you, originally no, thought of, you originally thought he died yeah. in his eyebrow. In fairness, <laughs> it is a long, long-standing long hatred that I have in the EPL. Like Nicholas Jackson uh, did, couldn't score a goal. Uh, Bakaya Saka uh, did, couldn't score he, a goal. Stop sh- doing it, idiots! Keep your hair normal! He has, yeah. Keep your hair normal. <laughs> Grow up. James Brayshaw <laughs> over here. James Brayshaw's like, Oh, jeez, me too! Look at his hair! Yeah, look at his eyebrows. It's like it's a tape. It's you know, a tape. Jim's hair is not naturally red. He just yeah, does. It. He just does. He just dies. I just want to be like my hero. Uh, me, <laughs> <laughs> Barry Stoneham. <laughs> Barry Stoneham. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the point being, so the way that this game sort of unfolded, like I think you're going to talk about Jace Burgoyne a little bit. Oh. Stats boy, he was fantastic. Yeah, but the way they just managed to keep them at arm's length back and forth all the way through that second half was just absolutely fantastic. Because it was what five points, I think, at three quarter time. Three points at the end of the game. That'll actually be a good worm if we want to chuck One it up. One of the yeah, great on the, on the worms screen. as well. That, I, that was look, really good. You know how I roll. I love a worm. We love a worm. It, yeah, it, it, worm. it would look Show us your worm. Get your worms out. It just goes <laughs> one of these. And uh, by the time the Hawks took the lead in the third quarter, you're like, here we come. It's the way the Hawks do things. Yep. Uh, they just couldn't finish it off. And there was also the moments where I think we also had like a touched goal. That yeah. was a 100% touch. You could see the snap. his finger I've go never, back. So I'm glad Port won. Because this is when I was in the group. I was like, need the AFLW balls right now. Does that track uh, yep. touch? Yeah, just even, so, even away from the goal. Yeah, so that was the touch on the line thing in the Gold Coast Carlton yes, game the yes. week before. Yes, yes, yes. So actually. I'm still, the amount of time that we spend on like touch goals and like, oh, we're going to go to this thing. When you actually look into it, like I was surprised by the amount of people going, oh, you can't overturn that. I'm like, you, you could see, you can see back, it yeah. being touched. What like, are we doing here? It was, I'm just glad this didn't cost Port the game. That's why I'm happy Port won in the end because, yeah, if that cost them, that, they would have been so funny. mad. Ken would have been yelling about Ken this. would have got fired on yeah. a technicality. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> would have been brutal. Uh, but Georgie Hardy's ended up with three goals. Yep. Yeah. Willie was great. Willie no, was, Willie! Willie! Willie was un- underrated in this game. They weren't like, like BT was talking about. Actually, BT was really good BT in the commentary. BT turned the clock back. He, he had a classic He was really BT good because he was talking up Burgo and then he was saying how well Willie was uh, setting up goals. So he had two goals, three goal assists, eight score moments. And BT was actually but, talking about that. I was like, even, ten years even when he called Great. the goal that was right on either quarter time or half yeah. time, he had that 15 second stretch that led to the goal. I was like, BT's good. That was when we watched something about him the other day and we were like, oh, this is what he used it to call It was amazing. Uh, and he brought it back. So I was it happy was because there's no Collingwood or Richmond. Yeah. He's dialed in. <laughs> it was like he'd not had coffee all year and someone had just given him coffee. <laughs> yeah, he was back. <laughs> he had like two shots of espresso. He was like, my brain is expanding. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to speak again. Yeah. Uh, if he brings that in the prelims and grand final, it'll be a great call. Darcy Byrne Jones is fantastic. Popped up with two goals yep. as well. Uh, Rosie kicks the first goal. Yep. Got him off to a flyer. Shouldn't have been a free kick though. He was... Uh, yeah. Warple handballed it. The umpire, oh, just couldn't, yeah, the umpire sure. couldn't see him handball it. Yeah. So yeah, the, I think... Everyone was in agreement that the umpires were having an absolute mare. For yes. both teams, oh, yeah, they were horrible. And God, it, yeah, was it kind of just stunk a bit. But either way, outside of this, like, what stood out to you most in this game, Stats Man? Oh, I'll talk a little bit about the Hawk, the Wizard. Like, although they lost, he is born for finals. He was unbelievable. Obviously, four goals last week, three goals this week. Alex is kicking himself because he got him at 51 bucks on top $61. sport. $61. Or 61 on top sport for most goals. If they played again next week, even oh, if they yeah. played one oh, game, home. you were probably home. So that's Jesse just Hogan's out. But the fact that he got three goals, that crumbing goal oh, is literally God, the God. definition of like, like the best, one of the best crumbing goals you'll ever see in a final, I think. The one where he just sped, and, uh, sped through the contest. And as he's taking the shot, you're like, he is going 100 miles an hour. There's nothing harder than kicking for goal or going 100 miles an hour. And he kicked it, and he's he's a freak. So, look, Hawks will be so happy with their list in the way they've gone. This is year. this is before they added yeah. Josh Battle and exactly. Tom Barras. So, does that mean the their new full forward is going to be Sicily? That's what I. Uh, oh yeah, we didn't even talk about Sicily Swing, going forward. Swinging him forward in the last quarter mm. work took those couple of grabs. Obviously, hits the post, but does kick an important goal. He sort of got him back in the game, and then almost cost them. Well, the he game. won them the game against, as Jim will talk. Won about them later. the game against Frio, so it's like. Mm. Maybe he's the one that goes forward next year, yeah. and then you sw- you swing him across half back if they need just to settle it down a bit. Yeah, you bring uh, in Josh Battle. I don't know. I just like 
going all out Cal Shadir and Mosquito Fleet, but that's fine. Yeah, but you've also got Mitch Lewis to come back Mitch from injury Lewis, too. Yeah. Joel, you're fine. You don't need Sicily up there. This uh, is a great list. Holy crap. Outside of that, I mean, the game itself, the way... I think they've done it without Butters and uh, Rosie yeah. playing great Yeah, games. they weren't like elite. Yeah, Hornet was good. Hornet was fantastic. We're, Until he got injured. He's yeah. on a watch because he looked like his leg was about to fall off. But then he said he was cramping. But, like, the, but then he, but he also had a problem with his uh, right quad as well. Yeah, so. but his left one was absolutely screwed up. Yeah. He's also a little as bit of a sook off. at times with certain things. So hey, when ah, he was dragging, ah, was like, ah, ah, where did Jason Horn Francis start his career? In North Melbourne. Hey, 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 I was talking him up during the way. He, he's at, he was great. He just broke my heart because he finished on 19. I know. Let's not. Then we can talk about Finn. Callahan. Anyway, uh, but the way this unfolds in that second half, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Great it's just pure pressure. finals footy. It was all awesome. pressure. Like, was awesome. It had everything you needed from a game of well, a semi final basically. Mm. Like if you cast your mind back to last year, we had what Carlton Melbourne yeah. semi final. It was just like that, just an absolute that type grim, of just like arm wrestle. And yeah. GWS just belted pulled off the park. Uh, yeah, it I wasn't just, like pure footy a lot of the time in this one, but that's what you sometimes, like as a footy fan, sometimes you just want like that really good yeah, tackling pressure sort of game. So it was fun. Yeah, as it sort of opened up, like as mm. you mentioned, like Burgoyne was fantastic. Oh. 25 touches in the end. Yeah, I was, was getting on, onto him uh, later, but he that's the best game of his career by an absolute mile. I like, Even last week I was saying, he's too skinny. He's getting bumped off the ball. And then he just was, he looked so strong. Their like, intent was there. That yeah. intent. Yeah. It started with Butters from the, um, from well, the, the, the first bounce. bounce at one point that was, it was Rosie Hornet and Butters. I was like, Yes. <laughs> but then as Luke Hodge pointed out five seconds later, yeah, they all just run one yeah, way because yeah. the ball just went straight out to Hawthorne. Well, that's exactly what we talked about with Simeon last Simeon year. Simeon said right? those exact words. Yeah. So, yeah. And it was like hilarious to watch it actually happen. Yeah. Like Butters, Butters just, just goes that Ooh. way and the ball is that way. <laughs> He's like the kid from the HBA. Yeah. He's like, I'm going that, that way. way. <laughs> that way. So that's where Butters went. He's like, I'm going that way. The ball went that way. <laughs> and it was just hilarious to see them just do it. You're like, oh, yeah, that's – not defense. I don't mind that tactic though. If they're all in there and they just try to play attacking, because then if they get out with the clearance, they've got three players. If out. they're but against, if they're against a ruckman that probably isn't Lloyd Meek, I'd be all for it. You just smack it forward and just charge. Lloyd Meek was really good, actually. Yeah, it was. Jordan uh, Sweet was as well. He had mm. fifty hitouts or something. Really? Uh, one who wasn't great. Fifty-two, but also probably won his team the game was <laughs> Charlie Dixon. Charlie won his team the game because he didn't play. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah, I don't feel great. Yeah. We that jokingly moves, we knew. jokingly text each other our group chat going, hey, Port have a chance now. Yeah, you, I swear you said it, then I said it. That was, that was very funny. But either way, anything else you want to hit on for this one? Because I thought Willie Rioli had like one of the, as mentioned, like he was, oh, he was he fantastic. He just set up there was one, it's, one, the, it's the pure small forward game. You only have 10 touches, but every single one of them impacts. Oh, and he, what, he's not one selfish of his, ever. One of his inside 50s where he sort of just turned inboard and just like a yeah. little dart kick to like, was it maybe even sweet or something? It was a good comparison. It was unreal. Good comparison to Weddle, who took a few shots from the boundary. He had an absolute stinker. Ooh. And then you go to Willie Rioli, who was a bit more open on the boundary, and he looks inside yeah. instead, of, instead of having a shot from the boundary. He's one, just a great unselfish player. That's Weddle, one thing I want to talk about with Hawthorne is a few times in that first half they did try to do too oh, much way too much and they've blasted out in the full missed shots not given off a handball that could have led to an easier shot so what was what brought them to the dance also risky, brought them yeah. undone yeah yeah not wrong I think Josh Weddle was fantastic like he was hilarious in this game because he had like at least three or four moments where he's like I'm Josh Weddle Check, yeah, and, but like, they, and it completely <laughs> completely screwed yeah, up he's like, he stuffed don't it. worry I've got this I'm Josh Weddle and bang like he either got cleaned up holding or, the ball yeah. turned it over or ran too far and kicked it out in the full we didn't even talk about Newcomb he was awesome as well it, He's an absolute beast. Absolutely game, everywhere. Yeah. It was like 24 handles yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Absolutely absurd numbers. Uh, but how do we finish all of these game wraps? Fan how base. are the two fan bases Ooh. feeling about this? Port, never <laughs> dare is a bar. We fired Ken Midweek. Now he is back. <laughs> now he's gone. Like, they're all getting around, Ken. They're getting around. And you can see that how much Rosie came out. Like, he's like our dad, man. Mm. He's like our dad. And... Uh, yeah, he is. It, also, see. his comments were a little bit weird going, oh, bit of media attack on us, you know, it shouldn't have been this and that's like, you got belted by 80 in a final yeah, at home. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah. We were allowed to whack you. Yeah, you get, you get, you you have to cop it if you lose by 83 at home yeah. in qualifying. If you lose by four goals, yeah, fair enough if people go hard, but anyway. But fan anyway. Bases, Port, Port are just like, well, we always beat Sydney, grand another, final. Another prelim. They'll also go. be very nervous, though, playing Sydney, I think. They, yeah, I think but they, they're, they're almost playing with found money now that they actually – everyone was riding them off. They've come out and won that. It's just like, oh, and we're against Sydney, who we who always we, beat. We always beat, yeah. If we lose to them, okay. If we win, who knows what will happen in a grand final. Yeah, they're not on a hiding to nothing anymore, yeah. right? So That's it's true. very – like it's almost a win-win. It's, it's like, not eh. all negative now, yeah. Yeah. Unless they get – as Unless long they get they don't get if they get stomped by 100, then it's a worry. It's going to get very, very ugly. I hope not. 
Hawks fans. Well, they're too busy moaning and yeah. complaining oh, about I've talked to Ken Hinckley. Leo, yeah. who's on this show, is, was, what did he say? He said, look, we didn't even play that well. We almost won. And he said, what a season it's been. I think Every that's Hawks, what... Like, yeah. I think the problem with the... Hawks fans are flat that they lost, but they're looking at it going, we were one and six. This is the exact yeah. thing. Like, this is the oh, weirdest, five, yeah. stupidest thing that... to take, Like, for Dermot... Jordan Lewis, everybody to take up this stupidly weird mantle. Like, I need to plant a flag and say, Coach, you should have done that. It's weird. You should be reveling in how awesome this season was. Sam Mitchell just turned them around. It yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah. It was so good. Like, I don't feel like they should be letting that color yep. the way their season is finished. They were fantastic. Hawks fans should their, be up and about. Their recruiting this year has just been unbelievable. Like, getting, yeah, obviously Massimo, Chol, the last couple of years, like, Honestly, awesome. Awesome yep. effort by Hawthorne. And Ken having a crack at Guinea after the game didn't cost them the game. No. So, shush. No. You're fine. Then finally, oh. GWS Brisbane. What a game this was. Just throw up the score worm, Joe. I'll just do it now. <laughs> yeah, score worm. <laughs> score worm, done. <laughs> well, Joe doesn't want to look at the score worm. Uh, had a bet on uh, the Giants and, uh, yeah. I, I love feel, this. I feel for him. I like, had a on the if you can marry a worm, it's, it's probably <laughs> this worm. Like, this worm is like right up there. It's a, it's a smoking hot worm. It's one of the great worms. You're weird. It's just a great worm. I don't even have anything to say to that. Because it just, it literally is like, what, from the halfway through the first quarter, Brisbane don't lead. No. Nah. At the end, they lead. When it matters. That was it's incredible. Wild. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> I love this game. GWS 15 10, the classic 100. I love that. Uh, 15, That's a good score. 15 105. I did spend quite, a, and I will cop to this, I spent a big chunk of this game at, in the fourth quarter going, what's everyone getting upset about? Like it's 110. I didn't have my glasses on. Uh, and I'm like, gee, there was 110. They're still up by 20. And oh. then I put my glasses on. I'm like, oh. Well, they're only on 100. <laughs> oh, geez, that's much worse. Oh, really? So Brisbane in the second half kicked 11 goals, four or oh, five. They, they finally goal, went accurately in the second half. Six goals straight to finish oh. the game. It was absolutely absurd. Uh, Joe Danaher just absolutely. We got the full Joe. We did. We got full Joe. <laughs> you never go full Joe unless you're actually just Joe. No, Joe can go full Joe. He exactly. went full Joe. Like, who? Who else thought he was absolutely going to nail that shot from the boundary line? I was just like, he's going to kick this. Well, yeah, that's the full, type of goals. We're going kicks. full Joe. He's, and then when he had that last set, I'm like, this will go out in the full. It reminded me of Travis Cloak, where you're like, oh, if he's 50 meters out or on the boundary with his glove, he just takes the glove off. He's like, oh, he'll kick that. Right in front, you're like, oh, this could go out in the full. Joe was just, and then obviously the clutch goal as well. They started 4 10 in the first half. You're like, oh, this is classic Brisbane. It was Brisbane funny. fans are like, oh, no, we've done it again, again and again and again and again. Four goals, ten. It oh. was legitimately like, I remember looking at that going, <laughs> they've cooked it again. Brisbane <laughs> sucked in. This is what you get for beating Carlton. Then it all happens. I'm like, come on, man. Ah, well, But at least we got beaten by a preliminary finalist. Oh, good. To bring that back to 15-15, which isn't even that good, is a good effort, though, from 4-10. That's, that's crazy. So mm. down 44 points. Yep. Oh. In the third quarter. Mm-hmm. Absolutely nuts how this unfolds from there. Uh, I think the Lockie Ash goal, and you're like, yeah, pack up, we're done. Yep. Yeah, I and think th there was a point where I was like, this is going to be 80, and then three minutes later, you're like, is this happening to GWS again? Mm. But then, then the it was the Loman, it was yeah. the Loman goal, then the big O goal. Like, they were both stupid. Yeah. Like, just stupid goals. Like, was really why did you let that? Why are you letting that happen? Then the Giants yeah. kick one, was it the first or the last quarter, I'm pretty sure? And you're like, oh, okay, Giants have got one back, and yeah, Lions have no chance, and then they just... Absolutely dominated. Second biggest comeback in finals history. Well, they kicked three points. straight at the start or across the Crazy. third and fourth, right? There was yes. the So right. after a bunch of goals from Brisbane, it was uh, O'Halloran. Yep. Then Jesse Hogan and then Toby, Toby Green. Toby Green, the first of the last. And you're like, yes, let's yes, go. Yes. They've probably got this sorted. Yep. They did not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? Two weeks in a row, they just cooked leads. Oh. I hate to say it. It's amazing. And I think <clears throat> but as they were quite literally like bagging Zorko on the broadcast, he then turns around and like it was, there was jets. four mistakes that Zorko made in the first half that led directly to GWS goals. So fair enough that they were into him going, he's having a shocker. Yep. yep. And, and then then, basically they played him out of the game, and then he played his way back into. Yeah. It. Then he got two goals. It was incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Uh, outside of this, Jesse Hogan was great. He. What about when he took that mark in the third quarter when he grabbed? There was just this way like, yeah, that dude rules. He's just like straight out. It was just, like, it was just gonna, a great like, yeah, yeah. I'm the man. I'm like. Yes, you five, are, Jesse Five Hogan. goals, one, eight marks. God, like, he was good. Just Absolutely. unbelievable. What, what else could he do? No, nah, he couldn't do anything else. He was awesome. And Tom Green was great. Yep. Sort of everywhere. Yeah. Were you in the Tom Green fan club from, from Melbourne? I, I mean, I was because <laughs> I just hate Brisbane at this point. <laughs> but oh, yeah. It was it was such a struggle to watch. The, like, so Caniglio, go, Caniglio goes out early with like a hit to the head. So uh, a Harris bite. Andrews in trouble? 
because he wasn't oh, he wasn't looking at the footy so. and his elbows have got him straight in the back of the head. Yeah, I think he's right. We'll see. But it's for, like the biggest sort of disappointment for me was like Lockie Whitfield, Josh Kelly, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Right? They just they never had like the quiet backup of just like. Well, Josh Kelly only had twenty touches, but he's had fourteen handballs. Yeah, it's like where's the yeah? That's not going to be damaging. Is tsunami it? engage and it never quite engaged. There was a couple of times it, it was. engaged to the point in the third quarter, and then they just went, "All right, we've done enough," and it just wasn't enough. Yeah. yeah. Brent Daniels, Finn Gallahan, stuff like that. Brent Daniels like, finals as a uh, you, you might. We had nineteen that. touches. Yeah. Meanwhile, you got Will either. Ashcroft out there crushing it. Oh, he my God. He, he was amazing. He and Kyle He's been Lohman, so good the last two weeks. They look unreal together. The two, the oh. hair flowing. Kyle Lohman, 100% bleaches and fake tans. <laughs> no, they're like... <laughs> He's in Brisbane. He gets sunburned. Yeah, no, that no, no, tan's fake. <laughs> I just sure. want to remake Night of the Roxbury with Will Ashcroft and <laughs> Kyle Lohman. Yeah. Get the hair going. Yeah, yeah. I like it. <laughs> Off we go. Uh, on top of that, though, for the Lions, like, what else were you sort of thinking about, like, they're doing it without Lockie Neal. Yeah, Lockie Neal. Yeah, Lockie Neal. Yeah, Again, he's having, touches. he's having, he's, he's just, he gets to finals and clamps. Mm. He gets tagged. And, yeah, Hasn't so. got above 25 possession in his last five finals. Mm. It is But brutal. that shows how, so Brisbane will take a lot of confidence from that. Even Lockie Neal will be frustrated with his own game, but he'll be like, like, I'm the Brownlee medalist. I should be doing better. And we're still winning. Yeah, that, but, the that's thing, awesome. but the thing is, it's now he's just going to, you just tag, tagging, you're tagging him, yeah, gets, yeah. almost wins you the game. It's then you've just got to stop Zorko from, you know, he's end up with 25. turns into mini Lucky Neal and just dominates himself. So Yeah, but yeah. can he do it again next week? He's done it two in a row. Yeah, I think he could. At the G. Yeah. But as that fourth quarter hits and Hipwood kicks his first goal, he was having oh, He's a, so bad. <laughs> so he know, we out. talk so much rubbish about the King brothers. Uh, yeah, we probably Eric should talk about Hipwood him Eric Hipwood yeah. is even more overrated and overpaid so than the Kings. So he got a I free agree. kick, wasn't it, in like 15 metres out directly in front. Ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. Puts it into the post. Or out, missed the post yeah. even. Just mm. Ball don't lie. Up. But then turns around in that fourth quarter, kicks the first one of that run. Then it goes Charlie Cameron goal. Then the Brent Daniels behind. Oh, oh yeah. The ad- advantage. Yeah. Lucky yeah. Keith behind. Mr. Sitter. Dane Zorko goal. Yeah, Zorko getting a few the goals. The Fletcher crazy. goal was absolutely massive. Just streaking mm. forward, buying. Everybody's like, oh, my God, we believe we can do this. And then the Joey Duckett's goal. And then the other. That Joey was Duckett's a bit. Goal. That free kick against Sam Taylor was pretty stiff. I was going to get to the Sam Taylor one. Was it deliberate or was he sort of oh. just? Like, he was getting pushed, and it's come off the back of his arm. Like if it was a full on skadoosh, then like yeah, fair enough. He's yeah, getting oh, pushed as it bounces off pushed. him. I think he's very unlucky because yeah, if you get pushed, it was literally the co- uh, yeah clear contrast to the other night's game, Friday night's game, where there was so many deliverance that were just like tapped oh, out there, of bounds. No, there was an awesome oh. one from a clearance that the guy kicked it about yeah. 50 metres, but it was a grubber. And it was like, didn't pay it. Yeah, that's genuinely just kicking for touch. Oh. Yeah. It was weird, but look, I'll, the Taylor one, you look at this and go, that's exactly what some finals just swing on. So yeah, it, it's like written throughout the history of Aussie rules football, yeah. like just weird little moments like little, that. Little, yeah, and you're like, oh god, I, you just hope that GWS can bounce back from something like that next year, and sort of put oh. this all behind them because I want to get to like how the fan bases are feeling. Uh, but I don't think we're quite showcasing this enough. Forty-four points. Forty-four points. Yeah. yeah, second biggest he comeback ever. Six in the straight goals to finish oh. this game. GWS in it's back a to massive b- capitulation from GWS. Back to back weeks, twenty-seven Brisbane. points and forty-four points. Oh. Absurd, absolutely absurd. It's so. It, where does that all go wrong for GWS? So like, is lo- Kingsley spending too much time on upper body and not lower body? Like, no, so, <laughs> yeah, so it's all glamour. Muscle. No, so you look at it. So last week with eight minutes to go, they put Jesse Hogan behind the footy against the Swans. Not great. Then yeah, you don't need to do with that. 10 minutes to go last night, they start chipping it around and going sideways yeah. instead of, you know, stopping what's brought them to the Tsunami. dance. Yeah, they, if and they play attacking, they could have been up for a couple more goals. Well, that's right. it. And yeah. then they get to the last minute going, oh, God, we've got to get in front. And they're just panic bombing it mm. long and deep and hoping for the best. Yeah. They've packed up. They've, they've Kingsley said during the week, I realize where we've gone wrong in that last quarter. You had the exact same, same last scenario week. last night. Yeah. And you did what went wrong last week again. Yeah. This is a very a big worry. learning curve and it's something that the Giants are going to take a long time to get over because it's like, oh, it happened last week. Yeah, we won't let that happen again. Uh, yeah, yeah, we let it happen they again. They changed their game plan too much in the last quarter when their their backs have, their backs dominated for both uh, games, the first three quarters. Then they were dominated in the last quarter. Like They just needed to stick to their game plan and kick a few. If they just went <laughs> state attacking, they probably would have kicked maybe one or two more goals and that would have won on the game. So, so they were killing Brisbane through transition in the first yeah. half. And then when they packed it up, Brisbane, it allowed Brisbane to get back and get the matchups Got that the they wanted. Back, yeah. it, well, I don't know what they're doing. But so uh, 
Over the last three years, this is a stat. Sam Taylor has never lost more than two one-on-ones in a game, and he's only lost multiple on four occasions. Ooh. Joey Duckett's got him twice in the in last the- quarter. Oh. It's pretty brutal to yeah, watch. Yeah. This is why you pay Joe Danaher whatever you pay him. Exactly. Big game player. I'll talk about that again later. How are the two fan bases feeling about that? Well, GWS. Well, I they mean, weren't even there. If they've got they fans, they're just like, they didn't even turn they're off. just in disbelief. Like, they're still walking around today going, how did we lose that one? Didn't we, we have a well. big, didn't we have a big, big sound? I don't no, know. Where'd the big, big sound it's go? Big, big capitulation, oh. I think. But anyway. As a neutral, I wanted GWS. Like, a lot of these teams have won grand finals in my lifetime. You want GWS, a lot of yeah, neutrals with the big, big sound and all that. Everyone gets on the orange bandwagon. And then they just capitulate like that. You don't want it. hate to see it. Teams that have been straight setted out. Mm. Port. There's, not a, there's not a giant amount of them in the last like 10 years. Melbourne. But it's like yeah. Melbourne twice. Melbourne twice. Uh, Port, Brisbane oh, have done few, it as well. I think, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the Swans did it one year. So there's like there's like a handful of them and you sort of read into it and go, what happens next year? Well, Melbourne went back to back being, so <laughs> yeah. which is not great. But but Stephen May still thinks they are better than Collingwood. <laughs> Stephen May <laughs> has actually got a 2023 championship medal. Yeah, record, yeah. So. <laughs> he's he's uh, made it for him. Yeah, he found yeah. it outside of Reds. So in the- um, but GWS fans, like they're just going to look at this and go, did we just completely screw up winning a flag? Yeah, they did. I reckon uh, that. I reckon that is a yeah. big thing they look at. So in the in first last couple of few years, yeah, in our current finals format, in the first fourteen seasons with it, only two teams went out in straight sets. In the eleven seasons since then, eleven have gone out in straight sets. <laughs> eleven. Yeah, Free, 2014, Freo and Geelong, 2015, Sydney, <laughs> 16, 18, Hawthorne, 19, Brisbane, 21, Brisbane, oh, Brisbane, 22, Melbourne, 23, Melbourne, and Port. This year, GWS. Crazy. So a lot Brilliant. of them were back to back. So are we saying uh, maybe GWS? Uh, no, it was two back to backs, wasn't it? Yeah. Two so back-to-backs. Hawthorne had 2017 oh, okay. in the middle. Yeah. There you go. And Brisbane had 2020 in the middle. Right. Good. Good stats there. Oh, stats I didn't know which year he said. <laughs> good count. Good listening. <laughs> good words. Can't listen uh, to everything you guys say. The GWS fans just be like, "Come on, we we've completely screwed the pooch." Uh, Again, but like their list profile isn't aging out completely yet. They're fine. Yeah, but I still think they they need to get more out of players like Cornelio, like Kelly. Finn Callahan yeah, still, needs to go to another level. Like at the moment, Callahan some of, did this season. Yeah, yeah but yeah. No, he still needs to go to another level. Like the players who their players who we think are A players, they're probably more Bs, except for Tom Green. See what happens. Ooh. And Toby Green is getting older too. Brisbane fans, they're just oh. like, what the hell just happened? They got a wiggle song about him. They're, they're pumped. This is all. They've got like <laughs> we've got the purple wiggle on our side. This yeah. is unreal. He's dressing up as a lion. It's weird. <laughs> so the last time they beat Geelong away was actually in a home preliminary final at the MCG when they had to host the prelim at the MCG. Wow, that is... That it was in like 2003. Wait, why? Oh, the because, the, because the Because the AFL in their infinite wisdom never yeah. thought that two non-Victorian teams would host prelims. Yeah, when the Scott brothers were still playing for Brisbane. Yes. yes. Uh, chaos vibes, I think, if you're a Lions fan of just like, we completely screwed the pooch and the loss to Collingwood. And one of the things we came into from Thursday's show was keep an eye on Brisbane's Accuracy mm-hmm. and ability to simply just win away from home in a final, which they're just not. Yeah, and finish. Yeah, finish some clutch goals. Like Joe Danaher, you would go, oh, is he going to kick this? He I don't know. Four goals, one. But Thank the problem you. is, he's going to kick one six next week. So yeah. the thing is, I think that is the most encouraging the Lions will probably have going into a yeah. prelim of the G. Like I think last year they would have been feeling pretty good about going into the grand, grand final. final, and rightly so, they almost won it. Like, but they played at the Gabba. Yep. This yep. is like away from home. You've won a semi-final away. You've got to go win a prelim away. You've proven that you can win away. Crazy. They still now all you have to do, you have to prove you can beat any somebody other than Melbourne at the MCG. Two right? and 16 at the MCG in the last had a lot of close games there. That yeah. I know that's an excuse, but they, they, are they haven't two played too and bad there. 16 from eight, their last that's, 18. That's why I love it. We get to talk a lot about these prelims this week. Cannot wait. Tipping results. Oh, no, we don't have to do this. Ofa. How do we all? Leo is the only one that got, Leo one. got one. And I, yeah. I think. I'm, hey, hey, Jim, how's your finals going? <laughs> I'm 0 <and> 6. <laughs> That's hard to do. It is. Honestly, it really he's is. the kiss of death over here. <laughs> I love it. I'm now going to try to go 0 for 9. Don't worry about Honestly, that. Honestly, if you go. Oh, that's impressive. Well, that means, he's, yeah, he's tipping Port and Brisbane next week. 100%. <laughs> yeah, but then he'll probably. That means that's if he's great. going against his own thought, then he's going to get two next week. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to figure this out. It's going to be good. 0 for 9. <laughs> uh, Leo was the only one who actually nailed a pick. And he only tipped Port because he was trying to moz him yeah. as a Hawks fan. All right, full credit to the boys. Who was the best team of the weekend? We've all gone Brisbane, yep. I think. I don't In think you fairness, can go Port, yeah. if you went Port, we wouldn't disagree. Uh, the way Brisbane just sort of put aside the start came absolutely flying back at them. Hmm. 
and just put him for the sword was inexorable. So like Brisbane just looked like a, a better team, whereas a Port, uh, what's it called? Hawks, Sic if kick Sicily kicks that goal, it doesn't hit the post, or Dylan Moore kicks that goal, Ken's gone. Yeah, but you also and look at it that Port have come back from an 80-odd 80, yeah. 80 point trouncing the week before and lifted and faced all the pressure and still got yeah. the job done. At the same done. time, Port were spent that entire game just absolutely turtlenecking. Yes. Like all their fans like, Oh my god! Like they're all they're just like oh my god. mid heart attack, <laughs> just going. This sucks. What are we doing? Chris Fagan because... nearly had a heart attack apparently last oh, night. Really? His heart rate was two twenty. The, nice. the, there's actually a great photo of yeah him underneath Joey Danaher looking up at him like he's like God. Like that was that, yeah. was, pretty, that was pretty cool. But I think Port weren't as impressive as Brisbane were in winning their game. Correct. Like Port just like yeah. they fell over the line. Fell, yeah. Exactly, fell over the line. Yeah. Hawthorne by any scope of the imagine, imagination could have won that game. Yeah. Uh, GWS, the way the Brisbane just went, nah, get out of here. We're going to win yeah, this one. Yeah, it's good. incredible. Yep. Best on ground of the week. Ooh. Joe Danaher for me. Yeah, he's To could, stand up that. that tall in that exact moment was absolutely <laughs> massive. Uh, because unless you put the ball in and maybe Charlie Cameron's hands uh, for those last two goals, well, there's no way Eric Hipwood's kicking them. But for him as a left footer to slot that first free kick one was absolutely I mince. And then the next one was absolutely incredible. The way it all sort of just unfolded. Yeah. I loved it. I thought he played a magnificent game. Because you got Jesse Hogan at one end going, This is how you play power forward. Check this out. And <laughs> he was a bit more was consistent, like, but Joe's ah, like, That's kind of neat. That's chill. It's cool. All right. Now I'm going to do that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Grab this entire game. As we say, by the scruff of the neck. That's why and they paid the big bucks. It was awesome. So. Yeah. Best on ground of the week, Joey Duckett's a game-winning performance right at the death. Loved every second of it because if he doesn't kick that like free kick goal, <laughs> they don't win. Yep. Uh, Alex. Will Ashcroft. This was the big arrival game from him. 27 touches, nine clearance, five, clearances, five tackles. He was phenomenal. Could have had a goal there or two as well. One of the goals that Joe kicked, it was all Will Ashcroft doing all the mm. work. He took on four dudes at once. It was great. Yeah, Will Ashcroft's really good. And again, another Ashcroft next year. Like I said that during the week. That's, get all the Ashcrofts. Apparently, I'm saying they're getting his dad as well. Like, that's just yeah. Again. How did you screw that up? Ah, don't worry about. It. But yeah, anyway, I like that because so Joey Duckett, Joey Duckett's kicks four goals. He has 13 disposals, and like the dis perfect the way that the Brisbane midfield was feeding that forward line was absolutely fantastic. Like it was all like especially down in the death. Whereas you saw GWS just revert to the old Carlton <laughs> approach of like bomb it long, <laughs> <open best>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you like lose it. Um, but that was awesome. That's also like I think for Joey D, a legacy defining game of like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm a big game player. Check this out. He's had a few big games like that. Yeah, he loves doing that. He used to do it for Essendon here yeah. and there. He like not in the finals, but yeah, classically he loves playing his Collingwood at like Anzac Day clashes and stuff. Yep. So don't mind that. What about you, stats boy? Well, we're gonna go the other, uh, yeah, the other game. Jace Burgoyne. I know he. Uh, I think he won the uh, Channel Seven award. He got got a free TV, and he was about to buy a new TV, so he was pretty happy with himself. Twenty five disposals, one goal, seven intercepts, nine marks. Almost all of those stats are career high. I think his career high before that was twenty seven. So almost his career high disposals. Everything he did, like even his one on ones, I think he had five or six one percenters, which a lot of them were spoils and things like that. He was just unbelievable. Nothing was getting past him. He was taking it. Yeah, so many intercept marks. When he popped up for a goal, I didn't see who it was. I was like, that's probably just Jace Bergheim because everywhere he went. And then the fact that uh, you got uh, Silk Bergheim was in the commentary just going, yeah. Yeah, Bergheim's know how to win finals <laughs> off their own boot. Yeah, like that. that is awesome that he's he's lifted for that name. He's got the old uh, number seven for the port, which he took off. Um, who just left port? I'm Robbie trying to Gray. Was it Robbie Gray? Yeah, it might have been Robbie Gray. I'm I can't sure. remember who it was, but he was just shining and as as uh, Bergen always does in finals. Just absolutely awesome. I, I said last week, too skinny. You, if you're playing on him, you're like, oh, I can just bump him off. He just looks so Robbie strong. Robbie Gray won nine. I got that wrong. That's all right. Um, yeah, so absolutely awesome from Jace Bergen. Dig it. He yeah. was fantastic. Mm. Old mate, no mates. Who's got no mates? <laughs> Sicily, <laughs> Sicily, he's having a sook, he's Sicily. So the Ken stuff popping off as they're trying to chair off what, Luke Bruce? That was, was also not a good look. It was yeah. weird. Yeah. It's like Sicily, just tell him to shut up and just like do your thing. Ken also shut up while they're cheering him off. Like, that's fine. Yeah, he probably needed but to come down. There was a thing at photo of Ollie Wine just going, oh, what's this? Yeah, this is great. From behind, I was like, that's fantastic. Also, how did Ollie Wine's not get done for dissent uh, in that game where he was like screaming in the umpire yeah. for the- Yeah, uh, Willem Drew as well. Yeah, anyway. Uh, Sicily though, you know, we love a, the idealized version of a captain's goal. <laughs> yeah. He had two chances and he muffed them both. Oh. What are you doing, Sicily? So- how many times do you want to have a crack at his captain's goal to win the game and he screwed them both? This is just Tazzy, just 
All of Tasmania's like, ah, how do you like that now there, James? So he misses the dribbler. He had more time than he probably thought. Yeah, on the dri- the dribbler was the bad one. Sends yeah. it left, and then the miss set shot after an amazing mark. Oh, yeah. her mark was like, so what was good. it, like a minute 20 left in the yeah. game? Takes an it absolute never shank. looked like getting close, and it somehow hit the post. Yeah, yeah. it was on the yeah, the outside of the post. Yeah. So you're like, and, uh, uh, so misses the misses the set shot. So it's the very definition of old mate, no mates of like, <laughs> you want this. You want these moments. Like, especially as captain, it's like, yeah. stand up. This is how you etch your name. That's why he was literally rules. tearing his hair out. He knew <laughs> that. He was like, he's like that, like, <laughs> <two times. laughs> yeah. That was weird. But those are the exact moments where legends are made. Legends. Oh, okay. And you missed him. Yep. So that's definitely an old mate, no mates vibe. That probably leads into why he's so angry and flipping back at Ken. Yeah, he was already frustrated. As Bruce yeah. is, like, being chaired off. And then he nearly like, dropped him. It's just like, Did he? <laughs> yeah. You had your chance. Screw the pooch. Mm. Sorry, Cicely. I was actually going to choose this one from Alex, but you beat me to it. Yeah. Uh, Brent Daniels with, what, 10 minutes to go in the game. GWS get a free kick at the top of the goal square. He decides to fly kick oh. the football in midair. Goes through a point and the umpire's like, yeah, man, that's advantage. You took oh, advantage. And he missed it. There is a golden rule in every team, I think. If you've got a free kick 20 metres or less, more or less directly in front, Take you it. just stop there. Unless you've picked the ball up and run into the open goal, then yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But to have a fly kick at it <laughs> in a game that you've lost by five points, I'm just sitting there looking at the end of the game going, <clears throat> why'd you do that? Yeah. Why? Why? Because in his brain he went, and now the door! He was completely blacked out. He's like, <gasps> and a whiskey! <laughs> oh, no, what have I done? Yeah. He's absolutely cooked it. It was <laughs> shocking in the moment. Yeah. And then once you realise what's happened, you're like, oh, no, that is definitely old mate. It was no a rush mates. of blood for sure, yeah. But old mate, no mates. He's only lost by five points. Yep, exactly. It's one of those moments you get back on the bus, and this is what we talk about for old mate, no mates. <laughs> sure You're on the bus, everybody's like, this guy. <laughs> just eyeball him as he walks to the back, <laughs> sits down disconsolately by himself. No one says a word. Lockie Keefe's also there for missing a set shot 20 metres out Not as great. well. Mm. Stats boy? Yeah, old mate, no mates. Luke Hodge. The whole night. Hey, he's he, Jim's mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, Westall mate. I, th- <laughs> I think he's a, he's a very good bloke. We met him. But he shouldn't be on Hawks games. He was very biased. Every time he, there was some good port, he's like, oh, but Hawks. He was like coaching Hawks during the commentary, which I thought was a bit weird. Then after the game, he went absolutely off about the Ken Inkley versus Sam Mitchell thing. He went bananas. And everyone's looking at him like, oh, is he going to stop soon? Like, old mate, no mates. They're all, all the other uh, Channel 7 commentators are like, Mate, just calm down. It's Hodgie. nothing to do with you. It's and like, you're on TV, mate. You're supposed to be trying to call both sides. So, yeah, old mate, no mates. They're like, yeah, this guy can't be involved with Hawks games anymore. <laughs> I like that. I do like Hodgie, though. We've met him a couple of times and he's great, but just he calm hates it you down. Now. Calm it down. Uh, Hodgie. <laughs> I love Hodgie. Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, I don't know if you've <laughs> What's my, uh, what are your dreams? I don't know. The jet ski. Uh, <laughs> it's an actual ad. I love it. Hodgie, it was weird. He just needed to calm it down a bit. My point <laughs> is, though, I want to do an entire breakdown of commentary biases. You see? Okay. And sort of go, if you if this team is playing, who do you not want on the call? Yeah, you know what? You shouldn't have biased people. Oh, there are so many Hawthorne yeah. players. that, And everybody who's got, like, at least a hint of, like, you know, I kind of hate Hawthorne a bit. You never, <laughs> like, Jordan Lewis hates Carlton. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he does. Cannot stand Dwayne them. Russell hates Sydney. And exactly. North. Like, and this North. sort of stuff. Like, and BT. It just any time it's like Richmond or Collingwood, you just don't want him on the mm. call. I feel like we could make a pretty substantially excellent list about this. I was about to say, Brayshaw with North Melbourne, but he never calls them because North don't play on free to wear. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, like like, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I got nothing. Oh, mate, no mates as well. I mean, obviously, Ken, uh, the way he got dragged after it and then the AFL going, we're going to do an investigation. What investigation? The, Adelaide, the AFL's going to find him 20 grand, apparently. Just. Right. I want to know what Clarko got fined for his homophobic laid and outbursts and Ken's getting yeah. fined 20 grand. Got, ah, sucked in. Not fined to Sydney. <laughs> he was having a bit of a laugh. <laughs> Suck it. Yeah. Talk, Talk all more. your crap on the internet Talk now. More. And then he, I loved more. how he said, oh, I don't know the social medias, but, uh, but someone, I, I yeah. heard, someone told his me. His daughter's <laughs> definitely screenshot <laughs> yeah. it and said it to him, Dad, look what Jack Gittemann said. It was funny. He literally said that. Yeah, I'm just not on the social medias, but I just don't think they should be doing that on there. So good. <laughs> but that leads us very nicely into why I can't stand. Oh, my God, there's a lot in here. I can't. Out, I can't stand fake outrage. Oh, here we go. Because that's what it is, right? It's fake outrage. Like, no one is actually up in arms about Guinea's post. Like, see you in 14 days. Like, the dude's like, yeah, I want to win and make a prelim and play against my old mate. You should. That's fine. <laughs> oh, don't say it on the internet. Shut up. Let him have a crack. That's fine. 
The same thing is, also, no one should genuinely actually then care if Ken makes fun of him for yeah. it. Yeah. And then Sicily getting all up in arms is just stupid. But that's also fine. He was just sticking Stand up, up for his... Yeah, that's fine. That's also that's fine. fine. Who's actually outraged? Buddy, nobody. This no, is no, no. just awesome. It's part of sport. It's effing theatre. <laughs> that's what it is. It's theatre. <clears throat> that's what footy, that's what sport is all about. <laughs> it's just entertainment. Yep. This just leads into it. I absolutely... It's fun. And my favourite part about it is that it leans into the humanity of sport. Like the way that Hen were, Ken was Bit of emotion, fired yeah. yep. all week. He's just, he's done. He's dead and buried. <laughs> we put him in the ground. We've thrown away the shovel. He's not coming back. <laughs> they win an absolute Barry Crocker shocker he's, of a thriller. He's back. He's feeling it. He's feeling good. And Guinea and his stupid little face is like, oh, and he's like, ah, <laughs> fire eagles. <laughs> like, like, it's just awesome. And that is exactly, as I said before, it's what I'd do. It's what most of us would mm. do. He's like, ah, we beat you. It's like, oh, be a good winner. It's like, don't they, talk they a bunch of crap. Being good winners, you guys yeah. weren't good winners all year anyway. Exactly. Sucked in. You cop a little bit of it. It's all theatre. I loved it. Footy and sport or entertainment. It's all about the humanity. You can't spend all this time saying, we don't want players to be robots. And then the first shine yeah. that we go, oh, that's too much personality. Don't do that. Like, it's dumb. It would have been funny if Sam Mitchell in the press conference goes, yeah. Like, it, it would have been more, like, uh, uh, nice or, like, going, oh, actually, you can see with Sam Mitchell. If he goes, yeah, look, Guinea said that on the thing. He was going to cop it, so fair play to Ken. And that's <laughs> exactly what he should have said. He probably should have oh, said, no, Probably not fair play to Ken. He probably should have just said, look, our players shouldn't have done that and they can copy it for Or it's just like, one. yeah. Yeah. He said it. He but went a life. That's what he said. Exactly. exactly. And they're adults. Simple as like, that. Come on. Anyway, I just think that it's fake outrage. None of it impacted the outcome nah. of the game. Like, uh, poor... Port weren't playing that game. Going, oh, Guinea reckons they're going to win. We better beat them. Of course, they're just going to try to beat them anyway. Exactly. Like, if, <laughs> no, if, we, we if Jack Ginevan's comment is the reason why Port Adelaide lifted after their performance the previous they Thursday, to, yeah. there should be massive concerns with what's going on at Port yeah, Adelaide. They're fine. So anyway, it was dumb. Fake outrage is stupid. Can't stand it. Alex. Oh my boomers. God. Just this is, boomers. This is a big one. Caroline <laughs> Wilson has come up with her worst take of the year. And wait, 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 wait. Showfield and the tattoos might be still So worse. this is what I mean. <laughs> so I think this is worse than Jared Showfield's not getting the West Coast job because he has tattoos. She said <laughs> that Jack Ginevan's comment on Instagram has cost Hawthorne the premiership. So she was assuming that had they beat Port Adelaide, they would go to the SCG and beat a team that beat them by 100 points earlier this year. And then the following week would beat Geelong and or Brisbane. Geelong, who also beat them by 60 points on Easter Monday, and Brisbane, who are playing just inexorable football at the moment. By continuously talking down players for showing personality and saying the stupidest, most insane things ever, we are actively not growing the game. Once these boomers realise that social media <coughs> is a way for the game to grow because Hawthorne's TikTok presence and Instagram presence has gone like this. It's gone through the yeah, roof this year. Great, yeah. People are like, this is great. Hot this bowl. is this is how everyone takes in football these days. Short form <coughs> clips on social media. But also, on top of that, that's why that game was so electric. Yes. Mm. Like, everybody was so invested with this Hawks team. Yeah. And there was so much excitement at that ground, just for the simple fact that there is so much excitement around that Hawthorne team because Hawkball. social media, Hawkball. It's been great. Ex letting players express their personalities is a key to growing the game. We're all better off for it. Discouraging it holds the game back from growth. What do I want to see right now, given how Ken goes, ha ha, sucked in, Giddy, sucked in. Opening round, Adelaide Oval on the Sunday afternoon. That, yeah. Hawthorne and Port Adelaide as the first game in Adelaide that week. Like okay. Bring it on. Yes. Do it. I love it. I'm here for this. Yeah. Let's go. I think the simple it idea. It just creates anticipation. I think just like having more fun when it comes to the sort of player personality side, <laughs> there's no downside. Like we lie, mm. as I said about Sheedy and Ken, we lionize these entertaining players of the past like Acker. <clears throat> Spider Everett, like just big personalities. Yeah, we loved are it. Yeah. Fun. Fev. The more Fev. personalities we have, the more of a broader range of perspectives we get. The greater the game sort of like appeals to more, more to folks. talk about. Yeah, like because I think I think about someone like Ben Brown, like a completely sort of unique personality in yeah. the realms of football. Who it probably not even it didn't get even like uh, as much shine as it probably ought to have. 
but he was a pretty big star for a little while. Yeah, no, not North, a long yeah. while. No, yeah, yeah. And I don't think like those aspects of his personality even got as much on as it's they the same thing with Dane Rampey. He's a very alternative dude. Mm. Like Brody Grundy's like yeah, yeah, exactly. So well, I love fun, yeah. I love shining a light on that sort but of stuff. But the Swans are leaning into the Brody Grundy thing on the internet. They had this thing of, you know, on their open training session that day saying, "Say all these Gen Z terms in this social media." Yeah, I was I like, ah, that's funny. That's <laughs> awesome. Go <laughs> Brody. <laughs> but anyway. Lean into the personality of the game. Yeah. That's how you grow it. Simple as that. And for like old people to be like, hey, that should, no, you can't do that. It's just against the, no. Nah, nothing Calm ever down, grows. Yeah. Also, old like, people are still going to watch the footy anyway. We need to get the youthful generation Which invested are, going yeah. forward. Yeah, no one's turned off by Hawkball. Like if they're an nah. old, like, you know, watcher of AFL. They're football. Like, this is fun. <laughs> That's like, boy. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll, I'll keep it a bit quick over that. That was a long while I can't stand. That was great. Uh, NG just being so empty. NG Stadium. That is just for a huge semi final. Two of the best teams to watch, maybe other than Hawthorne, in the whole comp. When even when Brisbane are kicking, missing goals, like this is still fun to watch. Like if I was in the area, I would have gone to the game. Brisbane fans didn't really travel very well. They've got a lot of members, as we talked about in the last show. I forgot how many members it was, but they've got a lot of members. Surely some of them can travel over. What is it? A twenty thousand seat stadium or something? Twenty three. Like? Twenty three, and not filling it with lots of empty spots. Giants fans, I know they've only got about, what is it, 30,000 fans, but surely they can get to that game when the a tsunami of, is so fun to a watch. A lot of the Giants members are signed up because they got KO free for a year and they're also <laughs> fans of other teams that if the Giants make the grand final, that's true, they're actually. probably going to get tickets. So okay, that's a good there point. Is, in Sydney on Thursday and Friday, a lot of free tickets were being handed out. The problem is NG Stadium is an absolute ball lake to get to. Yeah. It is very hard to get Still. to. The train to Homebush sucks. It's so, it's mm. very difficult. If you drive, the parking's expensive. So I think making those things a little bit easier to get to games would help, yeah. Just like, which is why the SCG gets full mm. mores. It's, you get from Central and you walk. Yeah, yeah no, that's that's a fair point. It's just, yeah, I can't stand watching a final, a massive final, awesome game, It is, and the crowd and atmosphere is just... It, but if it was like GWS and Carlton, if Carlton had beaten... No, Brisbane, but they would have travel. That's yeah. what I mean. It yeah. would have been full. You mm. know, it's... I don't know. I think Brisbane fans 30, can travel a bit more. 36,629 GWS What's members. What's Brisbane's members? Brisbane is 63,000. Exactly. Surely a few more of them would have made the trip and it would have, it'd be still fun. Yeah, I know you're saying it's hard to get to, but it'd be fun. Expensive flights. It's, you know. I, I don't think Sydney was as Brisbane bad as- Sydney, uh, I don't know if it would have been that bad. As bad as uh, Adelaide, yeah. Anyway, all right. With anyway. all this said, we have four teams remaining. What are the premiership odds right now? Brought there to we you go. by our friends at Top Sport, the home of footy finals. Alex, your Sydney Swans are $2.40 favourites to win the flag. I've said it from right? the start. Mm. Best team we've seen in 150 years. <laughs> there is absolutely no way they do not win this year. Well, they're they, they <laughs> going to lose by 100 again. I mean, he tried, he tried it before the GWS game, so. Mm. He's just talking fast. Try what? What are you talking about? Yeah. And they're the best team I've ever seen. $2.40, I'm loving that. Yeah. Uh, the Geelong Cats are $3.60. Yeah, that's about so right. So that's obviously, you know, essentially you won two seeds after the yep. way that the qualifying finals rolled out. Brisbane at three dollars eighty now. They've which moved is up pretty a crazy lot, considering yeah. that they're playing the MCG this week. Mm. And then Port. Yeah, but it's dollars. also I think into Brisbane's prices they're going to play Port or Sydney at the MCG, so yep. it's not as a not big of an issue. Not playing an MCG tenant. Yes. Uh, and True. Yeah. So Port eight dollars. That seems right. That they're the. If, the if you think Port can beat Sydney like they have done for the last eight years, you just back Port at eight dollars in the Premiership, and then you just uh, back. Well, we can't. We don't have those odds just yet. But when they come back out to make the grand final, Port will have no, decent there, value. No, there won't be that. That'll just be what the head-to-head -head matchup is. Stats guy. That's a very good point. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very good point. Yeah, is a dollar thirty-two to win. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I haven't looked at the head-to-head -head ones yet. Three thirty-five to win. So that's okay. Nice. So yeah, you might as well take the, the yeah. Final. You might as well make yeah have the head-to-head. -head, uh, but. but yeah, those. So before we get into the prelim previews throughout the rest of this week, as it stands now, Sydney are nineteen and a half point favorites. Oh, yeah, that's a lot against the power. Dollar thirty-two, three dollars thirty-five for the power, and for the Cats-Lions game. A goal? Only four and a half yeah. points. Four and a half. So it's $1.74 for the Cats, $2.10 for Brisbane, so that's a lot tighter. Mm. Interesting stuff, but this should be good. We have an absolutely crackingly full week of footy coming up. Let's go. Three limbs. How good is this going to be? If that can be as half as good as the games this weekend. We'll <laughs> on top of that as well, well, we've also got two prelims this weekend and then the Brown on the Monday. So oh, I can't wait. Should be good. I am going to be stressing balls on Friday. I'm going to Sydney. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> nice. Sure. I hate it already. <laughs> All right, but that'll do us for AFL today. For today, we'll be back with the Midweek Madness show. Uh, we've got a bunch of other stuff that'll be rolling off this week too, so keep mm -hmm. your eyes peeled. Across all of the socials, YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, and X. 
get around all of our other shows as well. We've got the AFLW Today show. We've got Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NFL Australia is back and flying. Looking so, forward to a 3 a.m. wake up again tonight. We have a massive AFLW yeah. today tomorrow. Uh, joining myself and Bryony will be Jess Webster, nice. who calls the footy for Fox. She's great, yeah. As well as Sinead Goody from Port Adelaide. Number one pick. Provided, provided Sinead didn't hurt herself on Saturday night against Freo, but that has been ticked off by Port. She so killed it as well. So, yeah, be a good very show. excited for that. Uh, and also hold all tickets if you're into the GGs. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you, you. too, Alex Donnelly, for jumping on. Cheers, Jim. And to the Stats Boy. Thank you. Uh, we don't know where Social Boy Leo is. We haven't heard from him. Mm. He'll be okay. Lost. Is he walking home from Adelaide? Do we know? <laughs> Maybe. 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 And he might make it back for work. Who knows? <laughs> Either way, subscribe, star, and like all of those shows on your podcast app. Get around with the YouTube comments. We'll be reading them out on the Midweek Madness show as well. So a bunch of yeah nars. So just chuck some yeah nars at us over on the you know DM Social Boy Leo. If you know, provided he's still around uh, and alive, you know. Well, he'll get onto it for us, no doubt. <laughs> uh, get around them all, like, I don't know, Brent Daniels skying a missed shot and busting oh. his team and spotting the prelim. Or maybe James Sicily missing a couple of cracking shots that could have put his Hawks into a prelim, prelim as well. Tough gear, I'll tell you that much. All right, we'll catch you later this week for more AFL Today. Until then, look up yourselves and remember, finals footy is back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.